Hey, welcome back to the Book of Dad Radio Show. I'm Dr. Robert Benson. As always, before we get started, we want to say thank you to Jehovah. Thank him for his son, Jesus Christ. Thank him for our families. Thank him for work and our ability to do the things we're able to do. Book of Dad Radio Show. And I, hang, I got the uh, engineer extraordinaire hanging out with me. What's say, Eddie G? Hey, sir. How you doing today? Are you staying awake over there, man? I, I sent him a, a little meme of me, like a little baby falling off the couch. That's how I felt today. I got up real early. <laughs> busy, busy man. I'm hey, excited but, now, though. I'm awake now. We have this. Absolutely. Celebrity. We got a we got a great topic, a great guest. Uh, let me just start by saying that this is Women's uh, History Month Appreciation. And the theme for this year's is, is the valiant women of the vote are refusing to be silenced. What a what better guest than we have? We talk about somebody with a great voice to come in and talk about to us during Women's History Month than Miss Sarah Dash. Hello, Miss Sarah Dash. How are you? Hello. How are you guys doing? I'm doing good. Um, I'm doing good. I, I I can't say I had worse days, but these are the better days because I'm still mm. here. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, we were just sharing some information about you. Why don't you share with the audience? who you are for those who may not know who you are. Okay, so you'd like for me to describe who I am. You trust that, right? (laughs) (laughs) We're out on a limb here. Uh, Go ahead, yeah. (laughs) I'm Sarah Dash um, in the music industry known as one of Patti LaBelle and the Bluebells who morphed into LaBelle. Um, I've been in the music industry since I'm 16, and I celebrated my diamond year last year. Um, We had a famous song called Lady Marmalade, Getcha, Getcha, Ya, Ya, Da, Da. It was produced by... (laughs) It was produced by Alan Toussaint, written by Ken Nolan, and uh, a wonderful writer who um, just passed this year. And uh, they were part of the Pepsi generation. That song, Lady Marmalade, set our lives up. Um, The other members in the group were Nona Hendrix and Patti LaBelle, known as LaBelle, with that super duper hit, as I said before, Lady Marmalade. Yes. Uh, I'm also um, the Trenton, New Jersey Music and Arts Ambassador. I sit on the board of the New Jersey Capitol Philharmonic Orchestra. I'm a trustee there. I served as a governor for eight years on the Grammy uh, board. I'm also an advocate for their board. I served on the national membership. I was part of their blue committee Um selection that is the uh, committee that selects the legends and um, gives you all the higher um, accolades of awards. And um, I'm also a top lady of distinction. Um, An organization started as a result of of Linda uh, Lyndon B. Johnson's wife. And um, I'm sure as I go, oh, I'm also a music director for a private school in Trenton, New Jersey, called Sprout U School of the Arts. And um, I'm busy. (laughs) Yeah. That's that's great. That's outstanding. But, oh, well, there's so many questions we want to ask you, so many things we want to get to. But, uh, and the fact that you're so influential is just uh, unbelievable. But I did not know that you were still thriving on the level that you are. Share with us a little bit about uh, what you think as far as women and y'all, women's impact in the music industry in general? Well, we noticed that um, for the past year or so, there's been a change in the recognition of women who do, who are producers, songwriters, uh, performers we've always known, but women behind the scenes. You have Sylvia Rome, who is an executive at Sony Music, and you have um, Deborah Lee, who's produced Um, television shows for BET. But in the music industry, we have great producers who never really got the recognition. And I think that change is coming. It has come. We have a new um, leader in the Recording Academy, also known as the Grammys, um, which is the awards. Um, 
we have uh, Mr. Mason, he is doing a wonderful job and bringing diversity to uh, that uh, recognition as well, not just white women, not just black women, but all women. And that change is changing the dynamics to into which we are recognized as having talent as well as the men who produce in the industry. And I'm very proud of that. So I, does that answer what you? Oh, yes, ma'am, it answers it absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, uh, the thing I want to ask is that, say, and you mentioned something about history. I want to jump kind of into the presence right now. I mean, I, we've had some uh, uh, um, historical voices in the industry, and we'll talk more about this as the show goes on. Who do you think or do you think that there's a voice that's out there right now who's a female, who is a institutional, if you will, who is a voice for the ages? Do you have anybody that you think just kind of is head and shoulders above anybody else right now? Well, of course, I'm going to be a little prejudiced. You know that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> or the voice for the ages. I mean, we would start with our group, LaBelle, and then you would work yes. to Patty LaBelle. You have... Um, you have um, Mary J. Blige, you have mm -hmm. Beyonce, um, the, you know, there is Barbara Streisand, there is, um, you know, um, there are so many, I should have made a list, but um, <laughs> those voices, Patty, Barbara, Beyonce, Mary, um, the newcomers, you know, Lizzo, these are, these are women who are making impact, are making an impact, have made an impact rather. And there are a lot of young artists who are following up or following through because they're checking out the patterns in which, you know, we have uh, set for the um, younger women to follow. And those voices, of the ages, you know, Shirley, you can look at Shirley Caesar for the mm -hmm. gospel mm -hmm. part. Um, you can look at uh, the young lady, I'll think of her name, but she says the song, Take Me to the King, I don't have much of anything. Oh, yeah, so, you know, I, yeah, hey. yes, this man's voice is a beautiful <clears throat> voice. Um, you have the whining, CC and B. CC whining, she's, she stands on her own, Yolanda Adams. So when you talk about music and women in it, you just can't exclude it to R&B, rock and roll. You have to acknowledge the women from all areas of that place, you know? Mm. It's, it's, that has been a problem for a lot of us down through the years. We have the categories and, you when you say, oh, this one is great, but what about Shirley Caesar? You talk about Barbara Streisand. What about Yolanda Adams? You talk about, you know, you see where I'm coming from? All oh, that, yes, you know, jazz artists, you have Carmen McRae, Sarah Vaughn, you know, all those people, those are the shoulders that I stood on. So I, I, I study my articulation from Carmen McRae and Sarah Vaughn, those people. Um, and, you know, uh, Stanley Tarantine, his wife, Rita Tarantine, she was my coach for articulation and jazz and music. So these shoulders of women, you know, they are very important when you do your study for things that they've done in the music industry, how they traveled during their era versus my era, and then look at the way that Beyonce and the younger ones travel. We open mm -hmm. doors for those young women to have the ability to do far and beyond, you know, journey, taking far and beyond journeys that we ever had. You know, you know, yes, some of them now are traveling on private planes. We had to go <laughs> on commercial planes. You know, <laughs> so it's those things, the commerciality of the work, you know, there are films that are opened up to them now. Uh, mm -hmm. There are, you know, there are just so many opportunities for them. And I smile when I get those calls and they say, oh, they call me auntie. Auntie, you know, I've been through this today. And, and I said, you know, it, it's my and it's my duty to really give them the truth 
about what I feel. They can make their own decisions. But based upon what I went through, you know, you take it from there. Absolutely. Well, Aunt Sarah, that's such a great story and great information. This Book Day Radio Show, I'm Dr. Robert Benson with Eddie G. And when we come back, we're going to ask Aunt Sarah to talk to us about the era that LaBelle performed in. I kind of like it them too, with their garb and their appearance to George Clinton and the Funkadelic guys and, and that era. So yes. when we come back, we're yes. going to continue to pull our code and get a whole lot more information out of the great Sarah Dash. Look at that radio show. I'm Dr. Robert Benson, Eddie G, and we'll be right back. See why listeners from over 150 countries around the world follow the Book of Dad radio show. Join Dr. Robert Benson and Eddie G as they chat with special guests who share their stories and information that will change your life. Watch and listen on lifeandspiritonline.com or subscribe to the Book of Dad radio show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever you get your podcast. Brought to you by the NASCA Network. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Book of Dad radio with Dr. Robert Benson and Eddie G. And our special guest today, the fabulous Miss Sarah Dash. We thank you for being here today. Uh, I have a, a quick thing. Somebody told me to give you a shout out. I was with a couple friends this week, uh, Chuck Gamble and Khalif Gamble, and they love you. Yes. <laughs> they said to yes. tell you hello. They said she is uh. the most wonderful person we've ever met. <laughs> oh my goodness they are wonderful people themselves yes yeah they coming from a great a, uh, royalty right a great mm -hmm. great name great legendary name and they talked a little bit about uh that last album you guys did the last labelle album the... oh, it, what did uh, they say it, oh, uh -oh, oh i'm it, it around. was fun it was a lot of fun and we have we had a good time. We definitely had a good time. As I sit here in the studio right now, um, I'm, it, it reminds me of the work that we did as LaBelle. Uh, there, I, as you notice, there's a lot of portraits behind me and things mm -hmm. going on, piano over here. Uh, it was a good time. It was a time that we came back together and uh, after 30 years, and uh, we did all a lot of majority of the work at uh, Philadelphia International Music Studios. It was great. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. speaking of, of your music, when I think about you and I think <clears throat> about the cross section of music that you've been involved in, you have done rock and roll, you've done R and B, you've done soul, you've done so many things that you you can't be put in a box. And we wanted to kind of find out some of your experiences as far as being a woman. Is it, was it different in those different arenas, you know, coming up? Because as you said, it was a historic time and the way women are respected now wasn't always the case. And I just would like to know if you had any instances that you would look back on and say, you know, it was because you're a woman that you weren't respected. Well, you know, when I first came into the business, I was a teenager. We relied heavily on the male opinion, what we should do, how we should walk, where clothes we should wear. We had a, um, a ma um, manager who was male. We came up during the times of the civil rights movement. So as black teenagers, we experienced not being able to eat in certain places not being able to, um, you know, we go and travel down south. We were in a station wagon. Later, we had a motor home that our record company gave us uh, because our record company owner was a man by the name of Hal Remel, uh, Robertson who owned a car dealership in Philadelphia. So we were the first people who used those RV motor homes and they used it as a promotional status. So here we are four black women at the time there was Nona Hendrix, Patti LaBelle, Cindy Bird song, who later morphed and went on to the Supremes, took Florence's place, and a chaperone and a manager. And here we are driving through the South and a lot of times we were stopped simply because the police officers down there had never seen such a thing, the motor home and these black people in it. So, you know, I was so glad we were able to go to airports, but we were impacted by the civil rights movement. And moving, you know, being 
a part of that movement, our record company kept us from actually being involved with King. They, they diverted our attention to more performances rather than the civil rights movement, the marching and all of that. And um, now tell me what your question was. <laughs> but, you know, we went, we went through the changes of, you know, not making our own decisions, doing what they told us to do. And I think, you know, one of the reasons why when we became LaBelle and we changed our name from Patty LaBelle and the Bluebells, we were very adamant about how and what we did. And we became an all women organization. Our attorney was female. Our management was our partner who was a female, a young woman from uh, England, Vicki Wickham, who had a huge television show called Ready Steady Go, became our partner, took us to London. We changed a lot of the way we sang. We, you know, was the difference between doing the Mary the K shows, the, um, what we call the Chitlin Circuit, the Apollo, the Royal, the Regal, mm-hmm. you know, the Howard Theater. Um, we used to do shows all day. And you think about how did we survive with the amount of money we made? And we, you could never fathom the idea of go, doing an 11 o'clock show, a three o'clock show, a seven o'clock show. You know, I mean, so all that, it's definitely changed. It's wow. made... Uh, women today would not be able to do what we did well, at any that's level. A great, I'm sorry. That's a great example you come up with because I remember seeing the uh, documentary on Ray, uh, Ray Charles, where he, in fact, defied that type of uh, uh, environment where there was this uh, uh, constant disrespect and demeaning of black entertainers. Yeah. And you all were in the throes of that. That's an amazing uh, story. But I'd like to talk about you all as a group. Uh, I noticed that you're from Trenton, Nona's from Trenton, and Patty's from Philly. Yes. How did you all come to meet and how did you all become a group? I'm, I'm just kind of curious. What's the story behind that? Yes, um, we had the same manager. Okay. Uh, there, uh, We auditioned for the manager, Mr. Bernard Montague, not the DJ. This is the, someone who happened to have the same name. Um, we He had a group called the Ordettes. He um, had in that group, Cindy Birdsong, Patti LaBelle. Our group was called the Del Capris, which consisted of Nona and myself and some other people. Well, when the members from both groups, some of the members sort of lost their interest as teenagers would often do, and he put us together. So hence the Philadelphia group, the Ordettes, and the Trenton group, the Dal Capris, we came together as one. And Nona and I would travel to Philadelphia to do rehearsals. Um, our traveling points of leaving, we would have to sometimes be picked up in Trenton if we're going to New York. But most of the time, we um, went to Philadelphia to start from there, wherever we were going. And that's how we have the two cities. Yeah. I see. Excellent story. Yeah, we were talking earlier about uh, your your garb and what you all wore during your performances and stuff. And I say a lot of that kind of smacks of the uh, George Clinton Parliament Funkadelic Brides of Funkenstein uh, uh, era, if you will. Were you all trying to compete with them or, or was that just kind of a fad thing? Or I beg or, your what, pardon. What was your mindset? <laughs> <laughs> um, straight no, straight actually, me out, straight me out. <laughs> yeah, LaBelle, we were the first to do that space okay. age look, and all due to Larry Legaspi and Richard Erker. Um, we um, were the first group, females, black, to ever take off the same gowns, took off the same wigs. And in our group, we individualized us, you know, our work. Uh, we had the same strong voices. However, we had different characters and personalities, but we had the same love for the music. That had no black girl group had ever changed their mind about the same gown, the same shoes, the same wig. Uh, Larry Legaspi created that space age look. 
our performance, I'll tell you where it started, the Metropolitan Opera House. We made history as the first Black group to ever appear there. And that's when we introduced all those magnitude of uh, feathers and piping, and I introduced the silver bra, and and uh, we did a production. We uh, Patty flew in. We used the risers. We started doing our show as a production. We were the innovators of how shows were now going to be produced and seen in the industry. We were the first to do it. Others will not recognize it. That's why each time that I get an opportunity, I will say we were the first, and we were. <laughs> I mean, the Rolling Stones started flying. Elton John started wearing rhinestone glasses and feathers. And, you know, I mean, we changed the, the image of how people performed, you know, during that time. And George Clinton was definitely influenced. And he'll tell you, you know, he was the master. He is the master of the funk. But he did. He was heavily influenced by our look, our images. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> so now when you yeah. see him uh, a big Beyonce production or people go back thinking about Pink Floyd with a giant pink elephant floating around. We know who started all that stuff. Absolutely. And, uh, <laughs> that was a great. Yes, a we great were the did. innovators. Of, entertaining. Well, you know, we had the basic rule. They went beyond and, you know, our stuff was created right there the day of the rehearsal of the Met. We had no idea. And our our crew came in and said, they have all these things in there available to the girls. Big E talking to our manager and says, let's see what we could do. And we said, well, we'll, they said, we'll let Patty fly. And she's like, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, you're not, I got to go all the way up there. But the audience lost it. You know, they completely lost it. I can say the Metropolitan Opera House in October 75 changed the face of how performers perform. Yes, oh. and that was LaBelle. Yeah. Well, I love I love to be stand stood corrected on on specific things, and that's one of them for sure. So we're going to take another quick break, <laughs> and we come back. We're going to continue picking the brain of the great Sarah Dash. This is Book of Dad Radio Show with Dr. Robert Benson, my main man Eddie G, and we will be right back. You have something special. You have greatness in you. Hello, I'm Les Brown, Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy. I want you to spread the word to your family members and friends to listen to lesbrowngreatnessradio.com. Absolutely. And let me share with you why we're going to be focusing on positive things. Because whatever you focus on the longest becomes the strongest. And now more than ever, when the suicide rate has increased over 33%, when the suicide rate of young children between 5 and 11 has doubled, people feeling hopeless and stressed out and powerless, we need programming that can bring out the greatness in them. And that's what we will be focused on. When you listen, it will be an experience that will transform your life. Les Brown, GreatnessRadio.com. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Hey, welcome back. This is Dr. Robert Benson, Book of Dad Radio Show, where you can get us where you get your podcasts. Uh, any place you get your podcasts, uh, Eddie G, as our engineer, he gets the content out. And we have great following because we have great guests like we have today, Miss Sarah Dash, who is the current music and arts ambassador for Trenton, New Jersey. But before we get into asking her about her role as an ambassador, because I'm sure it's different now than what it probably would have been when she was out there on the Chitlin circuit and, and dealing with those social ills at the time. I'd like to ask her, is there any other family members that you have who are in the industry that you'd like to share with us, uh, the audience? Yes, I have um, Julie Dash, the filmmaker. It's my cousin. Mm -hmm. um, we have Damon and we have Stacy, who's growing up to be such a wonderful force in the political field. I see her growing every day and and I'm, you know, in spite of her journey, I'm still proud of everyone because we all have to grow. Um, I have uh, uh, my cousin, John Dash, who is a major accountant for many artists in the industry, um, you know, um, going down through uh, family things. I have a cousin who's the first black judge in Santee County in South Carolina. Uh, Judge Derek F. Dash, and then I have my cousin, 
Steve Benjamin, who's the first black mayor in Columbia, South Carolina. So the family is well-rounded in change for America and what we do. Um, I'm sure I've missed some names, but these are names that most of the public would know and the journey that, you know, we've taken to um, just elevate people. And I come from a, uh, my parents, my father, um, I was speaking earlier on a radio show and they were talking about what dad had done in Trenton, New Jersey, um, being one of the first black scrap and metal men that the Italians sort of respected. And I still have that business, it's shut down now. And I just have the the um, the land and, and the building, which some mean person set on fire, but we're working through that. But having family members who are in different genres of the media, it's so important um, that we set examples for those to follow. So that's my answer <laughs> to that. Right. And uh, they call me the grandma auntie of them all because I was the first one to enter into the field of music. <laughs> so awesome. I, there you I, have always, it. Well, I've always heard it said that the show business is family business, and you definitely have had your influence on family and other people. But now that influence that you're having is extended beyond your family and your role as an ambassador. Talk to us a little bit now about your role as an ambassador. And you were saying before that you have an extended role with the Grammys and some other organizations as well. Yes. Um, as you know, um, I was born in Trenton, New Jersey. And uh, when I decided to come back because I needed to take care of the things that my parents left us, you know, the air properties and what have you. I'm not the oldest in the family. However, I'm a little braver than most. So yeah. I have no problem speaking up for what I want and what I want to do. Um, but uh, I came back to Trenton at the time the mayor there was um, Eric E. Jackson, and um, I was just asked to be a trustee for the Philharmonic Orchestra in Trenton, New Jersey. I actually started, there was something, a group called the um, uh, Trenton Symphony, and it had been shut down. And so a group of us got together and said, we're going to get the symphony up and rolling. So we did that. And Eric was watching my you know, journey back into the city, and he said, you know, we've never had a music ambassador here and you have influenced so many people here, you know, uh, instant funk groups like that who have come out of Trenton. I'd like to name you the music ambassador for the city of Trenton. You will be the first. And I was very excited um, about it. And then it sort of went away. And uh, one day he called me, he said, I haven't forgotten. I need you to come down to city hall, have a meeting with me. And um, and I said, well, this would be good right now. All I could think about is how will I represent the city of Trenton? Because Trenton, New Jersey didn't have the best reputation in the nation. It was always negativity coming out of here. Not to say that the things did not happen, but let them know that I'm from Trenton. Let me see what I can do to elevate the image of this city. And with that, I started gathering um, I, at the same time, I was a governor for the Grammys. So I started getting in touch with different artists and looking at who, what musicians were here and what they were doing and just bringing together my knowledge of who was around. And as a result of that, I created a course at the College of New Jersey, which, which previous name was Trenton State College. And that course was based on the history of Trenton and it was called Trenton Makes Music and where the children were graded mm -hmm. and that program still exists at the college with two other professors. Uh, you never know what you can do until you're asked to do it. Uh, and that came as a result of me doing a music seminar at the college uh, to bring attention to the music and the history of artists here. So having that um, now being named the ambassador and uh, at the day before, LaBelle got a, received a star in Philadelphia. Well, Ms. Sir, yes. thank you so much for joining us. I mean, this is unbelievable. Ed and I are so honored that you've given us the time you have, and especially with considering your, your, your mindset about, about making sure it happens. We know how to get in touch with you, and we're definitely going to have you come back to the show again sometime. It 
I would love to come back. I mean, and, and, and harness me in. If there's something that you need me to do again, please call upon me. I will bring the, the knowledge that I have, small, bigger, and different. I do, as you know, I'm opinionated. So, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, talk about, you know, whatever we need to talk about. We're going to close out the show with that. This is the Book of Dad radio show. I'm Dr. Robert Benson. Thank you so much, Sarah Dash. It's been a true honor and a pleasure. Thank you, Eddie G. I don't need to support a quote because that's what we're going to use. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll talk to you next You're time. You're welcome. I enjoyed myself. God bless you. May he continue to bless you tremendously. Tremendously. All yeah. right. Oh.